Robocalls. It is the bane of all of our existence. That's right. And, um, you know, listeners, you know that I have done a raise on robocalls and, and the efforts behind trying to stop these annoying calls. And I will continue to do them because this is something that uh, I know really affects my life and all our lives. And um, just what the latest information is out there on what's being done to attempt to stop the robocalls. Good morning, Jim. Thank you for Jim. Jim, thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you, Dorothy. It's a pleasure to be on your show. So just um, last Thursday, I believe, the, the FCC came out with a proposal that carriers, telephone carriers, would be able to put an automatic block on our phones to stop robocalls, whether we signed up for it or not. Can you explain just what that proposal is and where it is, what it means? Yeah, sure. So that's a great question. Um, the FCC has, has uh, you know, had a declaratory ruling last Thursday, like you said, and it now allows uh, uh, carriers to, uh, you know, block, block, Certain types of certain types of calls, um, they're they're looking for uh, them to offer them as free services to consumers. Although, uh, you know, I know a couple of the commissioners did did state that they wanted to see that happen. So, um, you know, would expect that that we would start to see those types of th- those types of services be more apparent with the uh, with the leading uh, wireless carriers that are in the in the U.S. All right, I have so many questions. Uh, first of all, does this mean that this is something that is now a done deal, or is this a recommendation by the FCC that now has to be approved uh, through a process, and when might we see this? Let's start with that question. Yeah, yeah, so that's that's a great question. It's, it's short of a mandate. Um, they're strongly encouraging the, the Tier 1 carriers to – uh, offer, uh, you know, to to start blocking those types of calls. What the what the carriers will do, I think, will vary based on on what they're comfortable uh, in blocking. Um, but what I think we'll we will definitely see is is more more of a freemium or a free offer that they're they're going to be offered by the carriers. We've seen it, you know, with AT and T and T Mobile today uh, offer uh, you know free free services. Uh, Verizon, you can opt in, and I would expect that you know Sprint and Sprint and others will will, will continue to, uh, and, and U.S. Cellular will continue to, uh, uh, you know, look to look to offer a free version of of their of their services. I, I don't think they'll initially, um, you know, block block calls in the network um, because they've had that capability to block certain types of calls since. Uh, 2017, and and you know, to date, really, there there haven't been um, uh, that many carriers that are that are you know blocking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and I'm confused about this because you just said what well, you mean to tell me since 2017, the carriers, and when you say tier one for the lake of our for the sake of our listeners, tier one are your basically your major phone carriers, AT&T, Sprint, U.S. Cellular, uh, T-Mobile, all of those. So you're saying that since 2017, these companies have had the ability, the technology to block robocalls, but did not, if not, why not? Wow. So, yeah, so they've had the ability to block what we call do not originate numbers. Probably the most prime example there is, the IRS 1040 number. Um, they don't make outbound calls. They do receive inbound calls. Uh, they were also allowed to block invalid numbers. Um, so, for example, a, a 555-123-4567 number, that's an invalid number um, or an unallocated number uh, uh, and unassigned as well. So, you know, where where a carrier may have a block of numbers, but they but they haven't you know, allocated those to uh, any subscribers. They've been, all, they've been, uh, they've been, they've had that capability uh, to do that since the end of uh, the end of 2017. Now, um, and and what percentage of of those numbers are the annoying 
robocalls that we get where it automatically picks up and you hear the computer voice saying, hi, you've just won. What yeah, so that's so that's probably about five percent of all of the negative calls that we see in the network today. So, so they're able to not, block. They've been able to block only about five percent of the negative calls. Correct. Okay. Okay. And they've chosen not to because. I think they've chosen they've chosen not to because um you know I think they're afraid that, that there may be a legitimate call that, that that's coming in on a you know an invalid number and um you know for whatever reason there may, there may be you know a reason that that number he was either call forwarded or you know somebody outpulsed the you know a, a wrong number um okay. you know when they were making a call so so I think they've been I think they've been um a little hesitant in in doing that uh, but, you know, we've seen, you know, for example, Comcast, uh, you know, indicated yesterday in a, in, a, in, a, in a meeting that I was in that they've started to block those types of calls and, and are doing so at about 100 million calls a month. So, oh, uh, you know, other carriers like AT&T, for example, you know, manually block uh, calls, in the, calls in the network. Um, but to date, I think they've been, they've been a little bit afraid that, that you know, it, there may be an important call or an or an emergency yeah. call that they didn't they didn't let through that you know that they that 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 they don't want to uh, you know they don't want you know bad things like that to happen. So it's it's kind of a balancing act, if you will. Yeah. So let me let me just confirm that we're talking about this FCC mandate that basically now mandates that the carriers block, turn on the technology to block about 5% of the annoying calls that we have had to suffer through. So if that if that is the case, you're indicating that these companies may begin to actually charge us for this capability, for wow. this service? No, no, no. I think they'll, so, you know, for example, Verizon, you know, came out with uh, since they knew that, that this was going to be coming, Verizon came out with a, a, the ability to, to um, you know, provide spam detection on the phone for those customers that want to uh, opt into the service. What the, what the declaratory ruling is saying is, is that we'd like the carriers to be able to do that on an opt-out basis rather than mm. an opt-in, which is a little... So everybody little, gets it, and you have to yeah. opt out of it. As right. Yeah. So they, so they won't. Okay. Yeah. So they won't block calls necessarily, <laughs> but what they'll what they'll offer is the ability to to say, hey, this this may be a bad call. So, you know, call may come into your phone and say it's potential spam, for example. And that's so and that's what the carry that's what the carriers are offering for free. So, where are we in the other ninety five percent of hell? Yeah. So um, also with that declaratory ruling that the FCC talked about um, there's this call authentication framework and I, and I know that you're a little bit familiar with it it's called stir shake and basically works as an as an encryption key the originating carrier um, will 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 sign that they know where the call came from and then the receiving carrier will then you know take take a look at at yes I I, I realize that, that this is what, what that call is coming from. So that'll help from the from a st spoofing standpoint. Um, mm -hmm. the, when all when when the majority of the uh, the tier ones, which which looks like they are going to do this by the they're going to implement this by the end of the year, that mm -hmm. should help. That should help with the combating of, of the spoofing of numbers. Perry Small. And we are talking with uh, Dorothy Tucker, who, and this is customer service. And uh, as I said before, Dorothy, you had a call. So when you're ready for me to go to the call, let me know. All right. Let me just, let me just remind our listeners that we're Terrell, uh, who is the Director of Product Marketing with Transaction Network Services and is an expert when it uh, comes to talking about just uh, how we can stop these robocalls and what's being done, what's being done, what's not being done. So, Jim, thank you again uh, for joining us this morning. Before we go to the caller, I would like for Jim just to define uh, what we call spoofing so that our listeners will understand when you hear the word spoofing, this is what it means. Yeah, so that's a great question, Dorothy. So spoofing is is just basically changing the the telephone number that I'm actually really calling from. Now there are legitimate reasons for 
uh, uh, people to spoof a number. So, for example, when you you know when you're talking to your doctor, or they may call you back after hours using their using their mobile phone, and, and they'll spoof the number of the doctor's office so that you'll know to to pick up. Um, there's so that's that's one legitimate reason for that. Uh, uh, you know, we know, for example, like a CVS pharmacy will, will, will use a local number to remind you of a prescription uh, refill. So there are legitimate reasons to spoof a number, but unfortunately, um, it's just as easy for the bad guys and the bad actors to do the exact same thing with the, with the technology that's out there. And so that means, uh, you know, all of a sudden, if you're like, you know, one of my, for my office, it's 446. I get something 312446, and I automatically think that, that is it's somebody, office. From the office, it, it's somebody from the office calling me. Wow. All right, Terry, let's take the, uh, let's take the call. All right, then let's go to Bill. Bill, are you, is Bill still there? Go right ahead. Yes. Yeah, go right ahead, Bill. Uh, okay, uh, Dorothy and Jim and Terry. Okay. Uh, I'm afraid that uh, listening to this, I'm a little suspicious. And I've got a gentleman. I think we might be duped because when you're talking about spoofing, isn't that what the Russians did prior to the election of this president this time? And uh, maybe uh, this uh, new technology, although it was there before, and although you can take your cell phones and block numbers yourself, why not have the technology you can block your home phone uh, numbers on that along with that? Because every phone is actually... uh, a digital phone now. No matter what you think, you can have a wire going to your phone, but you have AT and T with that technology. Where you hook everything up to the modem, so you really don't have a line phone. You have uh, other things with your cell phone. So basically, what I could say, I think uh, it's starting out of Washington D.C. to to block off some things. What are the possibilities? We have uh, uh, just to save for a, a home phone. A home phone is a regular phone. You can dial into it. The only reason you don't dial a cell phone is because it's a law against it. But, but uh, growing my concern is this, the uh, adverse uh, effects is probably minority businesses and community uh, organizations uh, that's in the community and companies that's in the minority community could be adversely affected by this technology because who are they blocking? What rules are in effect to keep them from blocking the wrong people? and what biases they might have in blocking. And before they do anything, I think they should check this first. Okay. Bill, thank you. Thank you uh, so much. Um, So, Jim, let's let's talk about just how the blocking would work, a little bit more about the the opt-in, even with with shake and stir. Um, Who will they block, and and are you at risk of um, perhaps not getting some calls that you really want if you sign up for this, and if, even if you do the uh, stir shaken, you know, just what will be the impact on our on our cell phones, especially? Yes, yes, that's a great that's a great question, uh, and Bill raises a great question too on the on the impact to to the to the smaller businesses that that I'll, I'll address after I address the first question. So, um, with with the free services, uh, they're not going to the, the carriers will uh, uh, for the cell phones. Um, will provide a, a spam detection display that'll say, you know, it's potential it's potential spam. They may not necessarily block the calls again due to Bill's Bill's you know Bill's point that he raises that, you know, there are legitimate there are legitimate businesses that need to get through. And, you know, on the flip side of the of the robocall problem is is that people aren't picking up the phones nearly as much. Uh, we know that um, you know from from studies that we've done We've seen that that about 10% of the wanted calls that I have are actually answered by uh, a- actually answered by the consumer. Um, you know, obviously, somebody's going to leave a voicemail, and then you're going to be able to return the call. Um, but with with stir shaken, uh, Dorothy, uh, what'll happen is, is is more and more carriers start adopting stir shaken and you know, interconnecting with a bigger framework. Then it's going to be much harder for the for the bad actors to to be able to you know spoof spoof those numbers um, and 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 then at that point once it becomes more ubiquitous uh, carriers may block if if the call you know doesn't doesn't pass through the the call authentication framework but you know clearly there's going to have to be some processes and procedures in place 
Um, there already are for, you know, mislabeling of calls where, you know, if a legitimate business says, hey, you guys labeled me as potential spam. Right. We work, we work mm. with the carriers and, and we will, we will, we will take, take a look at their feedback and then, uh, you know, make, make adjustments as, as, as necessary with with the algorithms that we have right. and how we would treat those particular phone numbers. All right, Dorothy, we're out of time. This was absolutely fascinating. I, I just adore you for um, doing all of these different stories on robocalls. And, Jim, you are very knowledgeable. Thank you so much yeah, for Jim, joining thank us. Thank you. And, and I have to tell you, uh, we really have to thank Jim Perry because uh, Jim works for a, a company that is in general again so we can talk about what you does and the services that that you offer as well to to some of these carriers so we can get more of an idea because Jim is he is a wealth of information but he also does work for a company which is why he knows everything to trouble cost all right Jim I want to thank you and thank you so much for your time all right yeah, thank, thank you, you so Dorothy, much. and thank you Perry it was it was great to be on your call we, you know I'll, it was awesome on, on your program yes it was to, awesome love to come back if the opportunity exists but, all right, we'll then. For sure. For sure. All right, then. Thank you so much, Dorothy.